O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. At the Lamb's high feast we sing praise to our victorious King who hath washed us in the tide flowing from his pierced side. Praise we him whose love divine gives the guests his blood for wine Gives his body for the feast. Love the victim, love the priest. Where the paschal blood is poured, Death's dark angel sheathes his sword. Israel's host triumphant go Through the wave that drowns a foe. Christ, the Lamb whose blood was shed, Paschal victim, Paschal bread, With sincerity and love, Eat we manna from above, Mighty victim from the sky, Powers of hell beneath thee lie. Death is conquered in the fight, Thou hast brought us life and light. Now thy banner thou dost wave, Vanquish Satan and the grave. Angels join his praise to tell, See our throne the Prince of Hell, Paschal triumph, Paschal joy, Only sin can this destroy. From the death of sin set free, Souls reborn, dear Lord, in thee. Hymns of glory, songs of praise, Father, unto thee we raise, Risen Lord, all praise to Thee, ever with the Spirit be. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for His good, for His love endures forever. Let the sons of Israel say, His love endures forever. Let the sons of Aaron say, His love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. I call to the Lord in my distress, he answered and freed me. The Lord is my side, I do not fear. What can man do against me? The Lord is at my side, is my helper. I shall look down on my foes. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in men. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Praise the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and forever. The God who is, who was, and is to come at the end of the ages. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Alleluia. The Lord has become my Saviour. Alleluia.
the nations all encompass me. In the Lord's name I crush them. They compass me, compass me about. In the Lord's name I crush them. They compass me about like bees. They blaze like a fire among thorns. In the Lord's name I crush them. I was hard pressed and was falling. But the Lord came to help me. The Lord is my strength and my son. He is my saviour. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. He is right and raised me. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished, I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Praise the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and forever. The God who is, who was, and is to come at the end of the ages. The Lord has become my Saviour. Alleluia. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. Alleluia. Oh, do me the gates of holiness. I will land and give thanks. This is the Lord's own gate, where the just may enter. I will thank you for you have answered, and you are my saviour. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. O Lord, grant us salvation. O Lord, grant success. Blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord God is our light. Go forward in procession with branches, even to the altar. You are my God, I thank you. My God, I praise you. Give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his love and use forever. Praise the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit both now and forever. The God who is, who was, and is to come at the end of the ages. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. Alleluia. Heaven and earth rejoice, O Christ. Alleluia. Because you have risen from the dead, Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. In the same way, wives should be obedient to their husbands. Then, if there are some husbands who have not yet obeyed the word, they may find themselves won over without a word spoken by the way their wives behave when they see how faithful and conscientious they are. Do not dress up for show, doing up your hair, wearing gold bracelets and fine clothes. All this should be inside, in a person's heart, imperishable, the ornament of a sweet and gentle disposition. This is what is precious in the sight of God. 
That was how the holy women of the past dressed themselves attractively. They hoped in God and were tender and obedient to their husbands. Like Sarah, who was obedient to Abraham and called him her Lord. You are now her children, as long as you live good lives and do not give way to fear or worry. In the same way, husbands must always treat their wives with consideration in their life together, respecting a woman as one who, though she may be the weaker partner, is equally a heir to the life of grace. This will stop anything from coming in the way of your prayers. Finally, you should all agree among yourselves and be sympathetic. Love the brothers, have compassion and be self-effacing. Never pay back one wrong with another or an angry word with another one. Instead, pay back with a blessing. That is what you are called to do so that you inherit a blessing yourself. Remember, anyone who wants to have a happy life and to enjoy prosperity must banish malice from his tongue, deceitful conversation from his lips. He must never yield to evil, but must practice good. He must seek peace and pursue it, because the face of the Lord frowns on evil men, but the eyes of the Lord are turned towards the virtuous. No one can hurt you if you are determined to do only what is right. If you do not have to suffer for being good, you will count it a blessing. There is no need to be afraid or to worry about them. Simply reverence the Lord Christ in your hearts and always have your answer ready for people who ask you the reason for the hope that you all have but give it with courtesy and respect and with a clear conscience so that those who slander you when you are living a good life in Christ may be proved wrong in the accusations that they bring. And if it is the will of God that you should suffer, it is better to suffer for doing right than for doing wrong. Happy are you when men hate you and say that you are evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice when that day comes and dance for joy, for then your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia. Even if you should suffer for doing what is right, how happy you are. Rejoice when that day comes and dance for joy. For then your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia. A reading from the instructions to the newly baptised at Jerusalem. You were conducted by the hand to the holy pool of sacred baptism. Just as Christ was conveyed from the cross to the sepulchre close at hand. Each person was asked if he believed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You made the confession that brings salvation and submerged yourselves three times in the water and emerged. By this symbolic action, you were secretly reenacting the burial of Christ three days in the tomb. Just as our Saviour spent three days and nights in the womb of the earth, so you, upon first emerging, were representing Christ's first day in the earth, and by your immersion his first night. For at night one can no longer see, but during the day one has light. So you saw nothing when immersed, as if it were night, but you emerged as if to the light of day. In one and the same action you died and were born, that water of salvation became both tomb and mother for you. What Solomon said in another context is opposite to you. There is a time to be born and a time to die. But the opposite is true in your case. 
There is a time to die and a time to be born. A single moment achieves both ends. And your begetting was simultaneous with your death. What a strange and astonishing situation. We did not really die. We were not really buried. We did not, did not really hang from a cross and rise again. Our imitation was symbolic, but our salvation a reality. Christ truly hung from a cross, was truly buried, and truly rose again. All this he did gratuitously for us, so that we might share his sufferings by imitating them, and gain salvation in actuality. What boundless love! The innocent hands and feet of Christ were pierced by the nails. He suffered the pain. I suffer neither pain nor anguish. Yet by letting me participate in his pain, he gives me the free gift of salvation. No one should think then that his baptism is merely for the remission of sins and for adoption as sons in the way that John's baptism brought only remission of sins. We know well that not merely does it cleanse sins and bestow on us the gift of the Holy Spirit, it is also the counterpart of Christ's suffering. That is why, as we heard just now, Paul cried out, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death. These are the newborn lambs who have been crying out hallelujah. They have just come from the found and they are filled with radiance. Alleluia. They stand before the lamb clothed in white garments and holding palms in their hands and they are filled with radiance. Alleluia. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as the Lord, everlasting Father, all the world bows down before you, all the angels sing your praise, the hosts of heaven and all the angelic powers, all the seraphim and seraphim call out to an unending song, holy, holy, Holy is the Lord God of angel hosts. The heavens and the earth are filled with your majesty and glory. The glorious band of apostles, the noble company of prophets, the white robed army shed their blood for Christ. All sing your praise and to the ends of the earth. Your holy church proclaims our faith in you. Father, whose majesty is boundless, your true and only Son who is to be adored, the Holy Spirit sent to be our advocate. You, Christ, are the King of glory, Son of the Eternal Father. When you took our nature to save mankind, you did not shrink from birth in the virgin's womb. You overcame the power of death, opening the Father's kingdom to all who believe in you. Enthroned at God's right hand in the glory of the Father, you will come in judgment according to your promise. You redeemed your people by your precious blood. Come, we implore you to our aid. Grant us with the saints a place in eternal glory. Let us pray. Lord God, you have made one people out of many different races and nations, united through confessing the glory of your name. They were born to new life in baptism. Let there be one faith in their hearts, 
one love in their Christian way of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.